Hello all, welcome to oratonis.com. In this Oracle database programming session, we'll discuss about PL SQL package. Let us get into the agenda. So after completing this session, you should be able to describe the packages and what are the components of it? How do we create a package? How do we create a package body? And how do we designate the components of a package either as a public or a private? And how do we inst invoke a package construct? And how do we make use of a bodiless package? and discuss about the overloading feature and describe the errors with mutually referential subprograms and how do we initialize the variables and the pers persistent states in the package. So as of now, we are aware what is a procedure as well as what is a function. Now in this session, we'll discuss about packages. So what is the need of a package when you have a procedure and a function? Why do you require a package? So package actually it groups the PL SQL component, nothing but the subprograms and the data types and any of the different items. Okay. So a package consists of two parts. Two parts. One is specification and body. So specification is just an interface to an application, and body is nothing but implementation of the specification. Okay. So what what is the difference in the specification? We'll just mention how does a package contain like a what set of procedures or what set of variables or what set of subprograms a procedure contain but you don't write the business logic in the specification in the package party will be writing the actual implementation okay and so like uh, what happens when you create a package right so generally like whenever you deal with a package once the package is invoked the total package will be available in the server and it will be efficient for the multiple invocations for the third party program. Let us say your package is, your package is getting invoked multiple times. So until unless your session is as long as your session is active, the invocation becomes faster for the third party system, which is invoking your package. OK, and the specification and body are stored separately in database. So these are these are all stored program concept, right? So when you create a package, the actual package content will get stored in the in the database. And as we know that package contains two parts, one is specification, other one is body, and they'll get stored in the database separately. So what are the components of a package? Okay, public package constructs as well as private package construct. The basic difference is when you say public package construct, the what are the components which you define in the package are available outside of your outside of your package also nothing but from other particular package it can be invoked directly not only from other package there also can be invoked from third party program nothing but from a java program i want to invoke your public package yes i can directly invoke it coming to the private private package construct they are available within the package they are not available to other package or they are also not available to the other third party programs so that's the difference and the visibility of the public is local sorry the visibility of the public is global and the visibility of the private is local okay so what are the steps involved in creation of a package so these are the five steps involved in creation of the package the first thing is we have to create a package specification you have to compile the package specification and then create the package body compile the package body and then you can invoke any of the package component okay so whenever you compile any pl sql component that generates a p code similarly for the function or even the procedure or even the package whenever you compile it generates a p code and that gets stored in the database okay now let us see the syntax of the package specification so the key the syntax is create or replace or replace is not mandatory but or replace followed by package keyword followed by package name is or as and then mention the declaration parts like it can be type any data type or you can declare the temporary variables and the subprogram specification okay and the replace option we know that like uh, it just replaces the existing one any variable which you declared in the package specification they are initialized with the null by default okay all constructs declared in the package specification are visible to user who are granted privileges on the package okay now coming to the next slide So just see the syntax of this particular example for the package specification. So the package name is operation create or replace package operation followed by ease. You can either use ease or as followed by a temporary variable name called TMP temp followed by data type. And we declared a function called function raised to 
and we just have two variables and return number. So here, if you observe, term p is a global variable initialized to null by default. Raise two is a public function that is implemented in the package body. Okay. Coming to the package, sorry, package specification. This is package specification, right? Coming to the package body, the syntax here is the only difference here. If, if you observe, you have a keyword called package followed by body. But in the specification, you will not have body. The keyword body will not be there. In the package body, you'll have a keyword body followed by. You can declare anything like a, you can also declare item type as well as item declaration. But whatever you declare in the package body outside of your sub program, they are all private components, private item or private data types. But here, if you observe for the in the package specification part, whatever you declare in the specification part, they will be by default public okay but coming to the package body if you declare any of the item or a variable outside of your sub program they are all private even the sub program also if that if whatever the sub program which you don't which is not part of your particular specification if they are available in the only package body they also will become private okay that's the difference and here if you see the implementation of this particular package create or replace package body is local number and function raise to we implemented this logic here what we are trying to do is we just written in the square of the number right so this is how you know like we can write a very simple function simple function inside a package okay so before proceeding further let us write the logic okay so let me declare first of all let me save it okay so i'll save my program name as xxot PLC equal utils. I am saving the file with the extension PKS, nothing but package specification. It's nothing mandatory. You can go with dot SQL also. Okay. So here, if you observe, it's saying with saving with dot SQL, right? This is quite wrong. What you can do is this happen. This happens uh, generally sometimes. So what you can do is you can just rename this one. Okay. And you can try to open this one from SQL Developer again. We can always better to follow a specific naming convention. Okay. Now, so I'll start with my specification create or replace package. Okay. What's the package name? XX OTPL SQL utils is okay. And now here I just want to declare a simple greet me function. Okay. Greet me function. So I'll just say p name varchar2, okay, written varchar2. So what I've done here, create a replace package, xx otpl sql utils is, okay, and I declared a function. I can also declare some temporary variable, let us say l underscore date, date variable is equal to sysdate. Okay, now just compile. Okay, it's not showing right. Yeah, I think yeah here. I can adjust this properly so that you can understand. You can visualize these things properly here. Actually, it has to dock here. Yeah, this is good. Now, if you just try to compile, yeah, this is a good one. Now, the package specification is compiled. What you can do, you can try to find out the source code, right? Whenever the package is compiled, we know that you know like uh, this will be available in the all underscore source table, all underscore source, where name is equal to. Okay. Yeah. Again, I think it got disturbed. One minute. Yeah. Okay. Now, similarly, I'll create package body. Open a new worksheet. Better. And save this file, save this file with the name dot pkb. And here, what you can do is you can just simply select, yeah, it is it is just select all files like this. Select save pkb. Now it should save properly. Okay. It should save properly. Now, what you can do is I'll just copy my specification content here. Anyway, I should not do it, but yeah, just want to show what is the difference here. So this is my specification, right? I'll just say body here. This one difference. And this variable is already declared in the specification. So you should not declare it again. 
now this function was this function was specified in the specification you have to implement so whenever you create any function whenever you mention any sub program component or whenever you specify any component in the specification that has to be implemented okay now let us see how, what happens if i don't do it right and also i'll just declare one private variable l underscore private number 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 so let us see whether it compiles or not okay now i'll just compile okay what is saying greet me is declared in specification and it must be defined in the package body right greet me is defined declared in the package specification and it should be defined in the package body that is a error okay now you understood what is the reason now i'll just copy this function name here okay now just select this one yep is begin body so for your component always have the block name so that you can easily differentiate now what i want to return us i just want to say hello or just say welcome p underscore name to oracle db world clear now so our functional implementation is almost ready let's compile it got compiled and you can just check out here r underscore source table i mentioned the package here right and you should see the package as less package body can you see the type is package for a specification the type is package body for the package body now let us invoke our function from select query what we can do select package name dot if at all if you want to invoke any component inside the package you have to mention the package name followed by your component name so in this one i'll just say john from jewel what will what it will say welcome john welcome john to oracle db world better i'll mention welcome john i'll just add up two and i'll compile again now try to rerun welcome john to oracle world anyway you can mention comma like this okay now let us say i'll try to invoke the same function from using a particular table okay my favorite table from emp e name okay can you see welcome king to oracle db world welcome black to oracle db world so now 14 times this function was invoked let us try to invoke the global variable also we have a global variable like this right so just see whether it works or not xxot pl sql utils dot okay so l date is not a processor Okay, first of all this is not a processor right this is not a function first of all in the select query you can invoke only a function which are available you cannot invoke a variable here so but how do you test it right if at all if you want to test that global variable is working fine or not what you can do is you have to use this logic only anonymous block is the only way l temp date so i'll just say is equal to xxot PLCQL utils dot date dbms underscore output dot put underscore line temp value date is mention the l underscore temp okay now try to run it and just see what it prints okay it printed properly now let us say i'll try to use so we declared one private variable here right we'll declare one private variable just try to access it and see what will happen I'll just say l underscore name number is equal to xxot or you can simply try to print it right you can also try to print it instead of declaring a variable this way also you can do it temp value date is version 2 xx xx ot pl sql utils dot l underscore date this is also possible way of invoking the variable okay now yeah now let us try to access a private variable okay let us access access the private variable private variable okay mention the package name dot and just try to see the control space bar okay now try what was the name l underscore private number this is not even getting shown actually 
let's see what happens okay now what is error it says compilation error okay i'll provide number must be declared it's nothing but it is unable to identify that so this number was just declared in the package body so what are the variables which you declared outside of your sub components they are all become private so there cannot be accessed by other third party program okay now let's get back to our slide so just now we have seen how to we invoke a package right so any component which you mention the package that has to be prefixed with the package package dot followed with the appropriate component and if at all if you are invoking within a different schema mention the schema name dot package name dot the appropriate component name now coming to next one can we have a package specification without body yes package body is not mandatory but package specification is mandatory here in this example here if you observe we just declared a package name called limit and in that we just declared two variables a constant variables called low salary as well as high salary so in this one we don't have package body but i can access the values also i can access the particular component values okay so here if you observe in the anonymous block what are we trying to do we are just trying to access the value right declared temp number temp is equal to limit the package name dot low salary and we are trying to print it it works perfectly okay so this is how we can declare a package less body now how do we drop a package you just need to mention drop package followed by package name and this is for the specification for the body you have to mention drop package body then package name okay so guidelines for developing packages so you need to construct packages for general use so what is the need of a package so generally like any any of the project for developing any of the program what we do what we need to do is when you design any plc sql component there are chances you may need to write a number of processes or a function rather than rather than writing them independently we have to club them into a specific package so that it will the deployment will become easier and the maintenance will become easier and you will understand what is the flow happening rather than referring to each individual n number of sql files you can refer to only two files one specification and one package body so there are lot number of benefits when you use package okay so if you just go through the line by line information define the package specification before the body yes we are aware the package specification should contain only those constraint that you want to be public right so if at all if you want something to be public mention the package specification or else mention them in the package body changes to the package specification require recompilation recompilation of each referencing sub program so what will happen is let us say if you are compiling specification you have to compile body also else it will become invalid okay the package specification should contain as few constructs as possible don't try to just always declares n number of components without need okay advantages of packages so as we know that like a uh, modularity easy application design you can hide the information right like the third party system doesn't need to know how you implement it you just need to mention your particular component name they'll just simply invoke it right they will not have access to see the source code they can just simply invoke your program that's it and better performance we know that like when a package when you design a component with a package what will happen is the total package package will be loaded in the memory any third party system which is invoking within the session it will try to invoke if the components are within the package it will it will not load the package again because the package is already available in the memory right and the concept the whoops concept the object oriented programming concept overloading is also available in the pl sql okay now so what is the overloading means overloading means that like a uh, the component name the sub program name is same but but the number of parameter or order of the parameter will be different that's only difference okay let us try to just mimic this particular sub program concept okay i mean overloading concept so what i'll do is so in the greet me so in the greet me what i'll do is i'll say greet me i'll say p underscore language so i'll just compile this one i'll just compile okay now just see here one more thing i want to show you all underscore i compile only specification as of now select star from all underscore objects object underscore name is equal to now one minute it is yeah 
okay now just see now i compile package specification what is happening to package body it became invalid right so when you compile package specification you have to compile package body also not vice versa right now let us say if i compile package body will the package specification will, will become invalid no okay now i just compile again okay anyway it will it will say that like greet me version latest version is not implemented right it will give an error so now i'll just copy this one go to package body okay now implement the latest logic for this one is begin So what we have done is the function name is same, but the parameters are different. And of course, the internal business logic was is also a little bit different, right? Now we'll just compile. It got compiled. Now let us try to invoke this one. So from here we'll try to do it. So I'll just say so here I'll just say comma. Any favorite language? I mean other than our DB. Okay, I'll say Python. Let's see. Right? Welcome King to Python. Welcome Blake to Python, right? So this is how we can do a overloading functionality. Okay. Yeah, we have seen the example, uh, similar examples with the different functionalities there here. And we can skip that. So what is forward declaration? So sometimes what happens is let us say in a normal implementation in, in the normal projects right so there are chances you know you may not have the clarity on the requirements while building the program but you you know that you need to have some particular component to be available okay and you want to implement it later or maybe let us say there's a dependency that you know like uh, one developer is preparing one component other developer is preparing other components so there are a lot good amount of uh, conflict will be there generally in, during implementation so now in this concept what we're trying to do is so the forward declaration is nothing but let us say you have sub program one and sub program two. If your sub program one is referring to sub program two, sub program two should be available before sub program one because sub program one does not know the availability of sub program two. So that is what the forward declaration is all about. What you have to do is you just need to mention sub program two before sub program one and you can implement later. So this way you can overcome the compilation issue. Okay, let us see the example, then we can have a clarity. So here, if you observe, create replace package body. Okay. So what we have done, we have just declared. We just see in the package body also we have not implemented here. Here, here if you observe, we have not implemented here. We just mentioned the increment procedure, and then we are invoking the increment procedure from the calculate from calculate procedure. But later we implemented the increment processor. So what happens is in this kind of functionality, what is the need of this one is sometimes there are chances, you know, like you want to you like you may have a dependency on other particular functionality to be implemented. In those kind of scenarios, just simply implement this one. Of course, this logic will not be like a, you may not get a proper output here, but still the compilation process will go on and you can still develop the calculate calculate method without having a dependency on the increment one. Okay, you just simply mention the forward declaration so that you'll not have any issue. Okay, so this is how we can go with the forward declaration. And coming to other one, so one-time processor. What is one-time processor? So one-time processor is nothing but like uh, there are chances, you know, like whenever you invoke any processor, you want to initialize your set of components or you want to get a value based on the initial, based on the some functionality. Now here, if you observe, I want to get, I have my package name as uh, increment, so I have a method called increment. Increments is package name increment is a precision name in this i just have a variable variable declared variable is uh, variable is called variable plus increment i'm just printing it but in the begin the begin block what i'm doing here so this begin block here if you observe i i don't have any here this end is for the package body so this particular package this particular one time only procedure 
what happens is you'll know it will not have any in block you just need to mention begin you, you just mention what are the logic you want to mention that's it okay so in this one what will happen is you can simply whatever the whatever the logic you mentioned that will get initialized okay this is a little bit different concept it's a plc equal one time process is an anonymous block of code it is encapsulated within a package and it is invoked only once when you when once in a session until unless your session is active that will this particular block will be invoked only once this, so that's a concept of this particular one time process okay now coming to the other one the persistent state of a package what does it mean so now i have a package called cursor uh, cur underscore persistent so i have a declared in the one minute I think it got struck one minute. Yeah, okay. So here what I'm trying to tell you is, so here in this particular package, this is my package, okay? This package specification. I'm just accessing this one, right? I'm just accessing this one. In the declaration section, I'm just accessing this one. And after that, in the begin section, I'm trying to retrieve the data from the cursor but i have one another begin block which i'm trying to execute so what i'll do is i'll try to show you this one then you can easily understand what i'm trying to tell you okay so what i'll show you is let's say create or replace okay i just have a package with the name cur underscore persist now now Okay. Okay. So now here, if you observe what is happening, identify name must be declared, right? So what, what, it's like a variable, right? So this one, this one, declare a variable. Okay. Now it got completed. Now what I'll do is, so this is the same session. So I'll just close this, my content. Now I'll try to open another begin block. I mean, I'll try to invoke the another in anonymous block. Now what is happening is earlier I already opened my cursor. If you try to re-execute, now what will happen? It says the cursor is already open. It means that your session is already open. Once your session is open, the package is already loaded and the cursor will persist until unless your session is active. Okay, this is a very important part you have to understand. Okay. Now, so far we just saw like a coming to the final summary of the session so far we just seen a very simple way of how do we create a package how do we create a components in that and how do we overload it right and how do we do a over like a using one time only process how do we create a one time only procedure and the persistent state of the packages right and if at all if you want to drop a package what you can do drop package and you can just mention xxot pl sql utils right right it got dropped and if you try to see it from the this one, where is our, uh, obviously no, it will not work. If you see all underscore object, right? It's not showing anything. It's not showing anything. Okay. Now, package body, okay. It says some issue does not exist, right? So when I drop package, what happened? It dropped the total package, okay? If you want to drop only package body, you can mention that. Let us say what I'll do is now, I'll just compile again. I'll compile this one also. Okay, now package is available, right? All underscore object, just see that. Yep, it is available. So I'll just say, drop package body, right? Package body dropped, okay, now just see whether you have that component or not, right? Now what is happening? Only package body got dropped. But when you mention drop package, the two, two things will be dropped. Specification as well as body will be dropped, okay? Just consider this functionality, okay? Yep, thank you.